Would you join me in welcoming Dr. Harvey Floyd? Thank you very much for your reception. And um, I appreciate the presence of all of you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I want to speak tonight from Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. Uh, this presents a summary, a summary picture of salvation. <clears throat> because of grace are you saved through faith. And this is not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works. And the result is no one can boast, for we are his work created in Christ Jesus for good works. Because of grace are you saved. Grace is not a force. It's not a, an irresistible force. It's not a force at all. It's rather the kindness of God, which people do not deserve, but receive as a gift. In Ephesians 2, there are four words that are used as synonyms. They're love, mercy, kindness, and grace. Grace is those things. It's love, mercy, kindness. The most general of these terms is love. Love is the desire to do good and not harm to someone else. Kindness is tenderheartedness. The opposite is cruelty. Mercy is compassion. And it is going beyond what is required by strict justice. Grace means kindness and mercy and love. But the difference is grace emphasizes that the kindness is undeserved. Because of grace, that is, um, that is called in grammar a dative of cause, not of means, but of cause, because of grace. If I had, a, imagine I had a board here. Um, I can remember teaching when we used chalkboards. <laughs> <laughs> and I like to use chalkboards. I'll put here, Salvation. This is a picture of salvation. Here I would put cause and means and result. There is a cause of salvation, a means by which it is received, and a result. Because of grace, that is the cause. Through faith, that is the means by which it is received. And created in Christ for good works. That's the result. Good works are the uh, result, not the cause of salvation. Uh, suppose I, I were to say, well, why should we quarrel about where we place good works? You believe in good works and I believe in good works. So I'll just put it under cause. No, that wouldn't work. In Romans eleven six, Paul says, if it is by grace, it's no more by works. Otherwise, grace is not grace. 
Works means human merit. If it is by unmerited favor, unearned goodwill and kindness, it cannot be by merit. So if it's by grace, it cannot be by works. We can't put good works as a cause of salvation. It has to come under result. And the means is faith. And that not of yourself. Now, <clears throat> not of yourself, that not of you. The that refers not to faith, but it refers to the idea contained in the verb. By grace are you saved, or because of grace are you saved. And salvation is not of yourselves. It didn't come from you, from out of you. It's not of your origin. It's a gift of God. Uh, faith in Greek is feminine, and grace is feminine. Grace has grammatical gender. English has only natural gender. Faith is feminine, so that's not, the, that's not the antecedent of that. Grace is feminine, that's not the antecedent. Tuto is neuter. It has to refer to the verb or the idea contained in the verb. It would be like my saying, the student has done well on this test and I like it. That is, the, the antecedent is the idea contained in the verb. I like the fact that he has done well. If I were to say, the student has done well and I like him, that's a different sentence. Uh, the antecedent of him is the student. Or if I were to say, the student has done well and I like her. Again, the antecedent would be student. And uh, the student is feminine. Because of grace are you saved and the, the salvation is received by means of faith. What is faith? Does faith in the New Testament require evidence? The Reformation said <clears throat> that faith has three elements, notitia, ascensus, and fiducia. Notitia means a knowledge of content. Uh, it's not enough to say, I believe whatever somebody says I'm supposed to believe. That's not faith. You need to know what it is you're called on to believe. Jesus met the man who had been born blind after he'd been healed. And he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? And he said, who is he that I may believe? He has to know who the Son of Man is before he can say he believes in him. Well, faith, uh, faith is, first of all, a knowledge of the content that one is called on to believe. And second, a census. That is, conviction that it's true. It's the conviction that the object of faith is true. <clears throat> that is, uh, faith involves the intellect. One has to be cons uh, persuaded. This is reality. Now, in the 19th century, Soren Kierkegaard said that faith can have no intellectual underpinnings. And the polar opposite of faith is knowledge. Knowledge can have nothing to do with faith. It is simply an act of the will. It is a leap of faith. Suppose Kierkegaard said, uh, someone wants to acquire faith. 
And he wants to believe, not as a cobbler or tailor or common folk believe, but he wants to understand himself in his faith. Let the comedy begin. He reaches the point where the impossible becomes possible, it becomes probable, and he comes to the place where he almost knows, or as good as know, good as knows, the object of faith. Then he discovers something else. It is impossible to believe because the object of faith is the absurd. Well, if the object of faith is the absurd, of course you cannot give any evidence for it. Um, it has to be um, accepted uh, apart from rationality. Uh, one just says, I want to believe it, and I'm going to say, I believe it, I accept it. <clears throat> uh, he said, suppose a person were to say, well, suppose a person were to object to someone who has chosen Christ as Savior, but you might have been saved some other way. Kierkegaard said there's no answer to that. That's strange to say. A person cannot say why he has chosen Christ as his Savior. I've chosen Christ as Savior because there is no other Savior. There are teachers and guides and gurus, but no other Savior. And he says, it's like falling in love. Someone says, <clears throat> but you could have chosen some other girl. There's no answer to that. If a person can say why he's chosen this girl instead of that girl, he is el ipso, that is, for that very reason, not a lover. And if a person can say why he has chosen Christ, he is el ipso, not a believer. Oh, that is very, very strange. Now, <clears throat> Let's take this idea that the object of faith is the absurd. Let's take it out to its logical extension. If faith is, if uh, the object of faith is the absurd, then that ought to mean if I tell you there's a book here hidden away in this pulpit out of your sight and you believe that, that, that couldn't be faith because you know that's possible. If I insist that a book is here, you, uh, you might uh, think it's very probable. You might almost know there's a book here. If you believe that, it's not faith. But if I were to tell you, there is a Cadillac here, full size, <laughs> and you believe that, that's faith. That's what that ought to mean. But who would believe that? Uh, <clears throat> Faith requires conviction that a thing is true. Now, this idea of saying if you can say why you love this girl and not that girl, you're not a lover. That's a strange statement. What if one were to say, I have chosen this girl because of the beauty of her personality and character? That would be far more complimentary than saying, I don't know why I chose you. I could have chosen someone else <laughs> just as well. Kierkegaard 
was engaged to be married. But his engagement was broken and he never married. Maybe if he could have said why he loved this girl and not that girl. <laughs> His engagement would not have been broken. Faith is knowledge of content and assent or conviction of the truth of what is believed. And finally, fiducia, trust. In 1 Corinthians 15, <clears throat> Paul says the gospel is that Christ died for our sins and he was buried and he was raised again the third day and he appeared to Cephas and uh, at one time to all the apostles and one time to more than 500 brothers at one time and last of all he appeared to me. What is he doing? He's giving evidence. Harvey Cox said if you want to believe in the resurrection go across the tracks and find someone that needs your help and help him Paul said, to believe in the resurrection, there are witnesses, go and ask them. I'm sure that some of you have seen the movie, Miracle on 34th Street. There are two versions of the movie. The earliest one, tries to give some semblance, at least, of objective evidence. Is Chris Kringle really Santa Claus? A little girl is doubt, doubtful that he is, so they go to trial. And uh, what they put forward as proof is the U.S. mail. They bring in bags and bags of mail. And it's delivered to Chris Kringle. The United States government recognizes him as Santa Claus. But in the later version, this is the defense. A little girl brings a Christmas card up to the judge and he opens it and there's a dollar bill in it with In God We Trust circled in red. And the judge says, the government has decided to say that we believe in God and we put our trust in God. And the judge said there is no evidence for that. We just believe it. We have made the decision to put our trust in God. That's Kierkegaardian. And in many places, Kierkegaard unfortunately, has won. Because of grace are you saved through faith. Faith is finally trust, reliance upon. In Galatians 3, Paul said, <clears throat> Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. That is the curse that the law pronounced. The law itself is not a curse. But it pronounced a curse on everyone who does not continue in all things that are written in the book of the law to do them. Christ redeemed us from that curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. And what can we do with that? We can't add anything to it. He redeemed us from the curse of the law. He paid a tremendous price and set us free thereby from the curse the law pronounced. We cannot add anything to it. All we can do is say yes. The gospel is good. It is good news. Yes. All we can do is receive it. And the name of the act by which we receive it is faith. And then there is a result. Um, so that the result of being saved by grace through faith and not by human merit is no one can boast. 
Uh, no one can strut and prance before God. Like the Pharisee in the parable of Jesus. God, I thank thee that I'm not like the rest of men. I fast twice in the week. I give a tithe of all I get. No one can boast. Because we have no accomplishment to which we can point and say to God, reward me for my accomplishment. That no one should boast for we are his work. And we are created in Christ for good works. That is, the purpose of our creation in Christ is that we might do good works. See, good works are very much a part of the picture. But the good works are not the cause. They are a result of the grace of God. And understanding that is true, there is no ground for boasting. Now, imagine, again, we have uh, these words on a board here. Cause, means, and result. Where would we place the atonement made by Christ? Um, what his death accomplished for us. The saving effects of his death. That's what is meant by the atonement. Where do we place that? Well, that's not the means by which we receive salvation. Put that under cause. God's grace is not given to us in a vacuum. And uh, uh, the grace of God in isolation doesn't save us. It is the grace of God in Christ that saves us. God's grace is mediated to us through Christ and particularly through his death. So we place the atonement here under, under um, cause. Where shall we place repentance? I don't know anyone who says that faith, uh, that repentance is not involved uh, in uh, the process of salvation. I don't know anyone that says faith excludes repentance. It's not, repentance is not necessary because it's by faith, no. Faith, I mean, repentance is involved in the process. How are faith and repentance related? We put repentance under means. It is subsumed under faith. And how are they related? Well, you don't have one without the other. They develop together. They begin together and they develop together. As one comes to faith, one begins to repent. And as one repents, one comes more and more to believe. Or consider it this way. Repentance is turning from something and faith is turning to Christ. You can't turn to something without turning from something. The turning from is repentance. The turning to Christ is faith. <clears throat> now where shall we place <clears throat> baptism? Should we place it over here as a result? <clears throat> as a good work which we do because we are saved? No, that's not where it is placed. Baptism <clears throat> is subsumed under faith. It has the meaning of faith. <clears throat> it is faith concretized or given concrete expression. Uh, <clears throat> James Denny said, faith and baptism are the outside and inside of the same thing. The outside is baptism. The inside is faith. In uh, Colossians 2.12, Paul said that we were buried with him in baptism, in which also we were raised through faith. The faith that is present 
in baptism and given concrete expression in baptism. We are raised, we are buried and raised with Christ in baptism, not by magic and not because there is supernatural power in the water and not uh, by baptismal regeneration, that is, that baptism does in and of itself confer grace. No. What makes baptism baptism is the presence of faith which is expressed concretely in baptism. <clears throat> there is a um, famous British Baptist scholar, George Beasley Murray, who said, when we look at the New Testament texts that speak of baptism, it's amazing. Uh, the grace that is said to be available for man in baptism. We that are Baptists, he said, have been slow to accept this even when it is explained to us. Part of the reason is the subject has been presented in a wrong way. But that, he says, is no reason uh, to reject what the New Testament teaches on the subject. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and mind and soul and strength. Where will we put that? Place that under result. It's not the cause. It's not the means. It's a result. We love God because he first loved us. <clears throat> we learn of God's love from the gospel. And we love because he first loved us. Pure religion and undefiled is to visit the widows and orphans and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Where do we place that? Place that too under result. Place all good works under result. Now, I appreciate very much your attention and your presence tonight. Thank you very much.